Good morning. I'm Dusty Holman Sprague. I'm the executive director of the Maine Women's Lobby and the Maine Women's Lobby Education Fund. And we're here today um, with a coalition from the Courts Matter Coalition of Maine because we need to talk about last night's vote in the Senate. Last night, uh, the Senate voted to confirm Amy Coney Barrett as the ninth member of the Supreme Court in one of the fastest nomination processes that has ever taken place in the United States. Mainers and Americans deserve a democracy that works for all of us. And we deserve courts that work to protect equal justice for everyone. Just eight days before the election, the Senate majority rushed through one of the fastest Supreme Court appointments in our history. Additionally, it was the first nomination process to take place while an election was already underway. In Maine, over 350,000 people have already cast their ballots. Nationally, that figure is 60 million. However, this is not an outlying event. This is not the only time that the Senate majority has made a decision to rig the process in the courts. In fact, in recent years, they've made aggressive moves to reshape the courts. Three out of a four, uh, three out of four appointees in this administration are men. Only 15% of appointees are people of color, and a record number of nominees are rated not qualified by the American Bar Association. Additionally, significant numbers of them are hostile to policies such as the Affordable Care Act, which are crafted and enacted by duly elected legislators. These folks do not represent the direction of our country. And why does it matter? It matters because we know that the courts have an enormous role to play in protecting the rights of all people, but especially marginalized and disenfranchised people. In recent years, the court has made decisions that affect whether employees can access birth control, decisions about whether people can marry the person that they love, decisions about who can access the ballot box, and now our ability to access reproductive health care and comprehensive health coverage through the Affordable Care Act is on the line. We know that elections have consequences. That's why we have them regularly in this country. And that is why there is one happening as we speak. This shift away from democratic processes and democratic institutions means that now more than ever, it's up to states and regional district courts to dig deep and ensure that we protect the health of our communities as well as our democracy. I wanna welcome a couple of other members of the Courts Matter Coalition. Uh, who can speak really more deeply about the impact that the courts have and are likely to have on the health of our communities um, in the coming weeks and years. Uh, Nicole Clegg from Planned Parenthood Maine Action Fund. Uh, can you join us, Nicole? Thank you, Dusty, and um, thanks, Tiara and Kate, for um, joining uh, in this important conversation, I think honestly shocking conversation that we are having in the middle of an election. And um, before I begin with talking specifically about what this could mean for reproductive rights and freedom, I wanna just state sort of what we are living with right now, which is our country is in the middle of a pandemic that has killed more than 200,000 people. We are wrestling with an economic recession unlike anything we've seen since the Great Depression. And we must face and deal with a national rec reckoning around systemic racism. So it is absolutely shocking and totally inappropriate that Republicans in the Senate with the Trump administration have rushed through this confirmation process while we are voting to select the next president of the United States. Now, when we think about what this means for reproductive rights and freedom, um, it's important to uh, appreciate what the current context or current situation is in the United States. Um, you know, with Amy Coney Barrett now confirmed to the Supreme Court, Roe versus Wade could be rendered meaningless um, before it's even overturned. 
Um, in fact, for many people, it already is. Since 2011, more than 480 abortion restrictions have passed in states, making abortion inaccessible for many people with low incomes, black and brown people in particular, and women who are forced to navigate racist and discriminatory systems in order to access the basic health care that they need. Right now, there are 17 abortion-related cases that are just one step away from the Supreme Court. Most of these involve incremental restrictions that effectively ban abortion without the need to overturn Roe. These incremental bans combined with trigger laws designed to immediately ban abortion if Roe were to fall and with over 20 state legislatures hostile to reproductive health care means that what little is left of abortion access could be eliminated for an estimated 25 million women of reproductive age with Barrett on the Supreme Court. Last year, or actually in 2018, shortly after the Senate confirmed Justice Kavanaugh, 25 abortion bans passed in just 12 states. They passed in Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, North Dakota, Ohio, Tennessee, and Utah. All of these laws were blocked by lower courts, but some are making their way up through the appeals process. In 2011, when we saw an explosion of abortion restrictions passed, they ran the gamut from mandatory waiting periods, two trip requirements, bans on insurance coverage and telehealth abortion bans. And these have passed in states across the country, making it harder or almost impossible for people with low incomes and communities of color to access the care that they need. Five states in our country have only one abortion provider left. They are Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, and West Virginia. I mean, it bears noting that the consequence of what the Senate and the Trump administration did last night will, have irreparable, will impact irreparable harm on people across this country. With 25 million women of reproductive age living in states where abortion could be banned. 10 states have trigger bans and nearly half of the states have some combination of trigger bans, pre-row bans, and hostile legislatures that will make abortion virtually impossible to access. And now we also know that this is deeply unpopular among Americans and Mainers. Nearly three quarters of American voters believe that Roe versus Wade should stand. They support access to safe and legal abortion. This is wholly inconsistent with what people want. People want people to be able to make their own decisions about their pregnancies. They want people to have access to safe, non-judgmental care in the communities in which they live. And unfortunately, what we've seen is a systemic and intentional dismantling of these basic reproductive rights and reproductive freedoms that Americans have come to depend on for the last 50 years. I mean, the consequence of what happened last night is real. It's just a matter of time. And when people look to me, and I have plenty of voicemails from last night and this morning saying, can you give me some good news? Can you tell me what we can do? We can do things. This is not outside of our control. First and foremost, we have to vote. This election is underway. It is critically important. If you care about reproductive rights and reproductive freedom, you need to get involved. You need to be making sure that you're supporting candidates who will stand up for those basic rights. And then after the election, we need to demand the most that we possibly can of our state legislators, of our elected officials, whether or not they're representing us in Augusta or in Washington, DC. This, we can't back down. We have to continue moving forward. Um, and thank you, Dusty. Thank you, Nicole. And I'd like to introduce as well, Kate Enda from the Maine Consumers for Affordable Healthcare. Thanks, Kate. So much, Dusty, and thanks so much, Nicole, for kind of providing that context for um, what is happening right now in the backdrop of this decision. Uh, Consumers for Affordable Healthcare is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. Our mission is to advocate for access to affordable quality health care for every person in Maine. We also serve as Maine's Consumer Assistance Program for health insurance, and we operate a toll-free helpline where we offer free confidential help to people who have questions about health coverage options, issues accessing or using their insurance, or who need help applying for and enrolling in coverage. We are extremely disappointed in the Senate's decision last night to put politics over people's lives by rushing through a Supreme Court confirmation 
for a person who has criticized past judicial rulings that have upheld the Affordable Care Act against partisan attacks. We hear from thousands of Mainers through our helpline who are benefiting from the ACA, including many people who are self-employed or work for small businesses that are now able to access insurance and see their doctor for the first time, oftentimes in years, um, since you know, prior to the Affordable Care Act. Last year, nearly 60,000 Mainers got coverage through the marketplace, and over eight out of 10 of those people qualified for financial assistance to lower the cost of their plan. Since Governor Mills implemented main care expansion last year, nearly 63,000 people have enrolled in expanded main care coverage, which is available under the ACA. Main care expansion has provided access to critical and necessary healthcare services to thousands of Mainers, including helping over 31,000 Mainers access mental health treatment and helping over 12,000 Maine people get treatment for substance use disorder. Over the past several months, we've been hearing from a lot of people who have been laid off or furloughed due to COVID-19, many of which who have also lost their health insurance. During this healthcare crisis and period of economic uncertainty, it's critical that people can access the affordable health care and coverage that they need. The coverage programs available through the ACA, including Marketplace and Maine Care Expansion, have been a lifeline for thousands of Mainers who have been losing their other health insurance. And it's especially crucial right now during this time. The COVID-19 pandemic has also shown a light on many of the disparities within our healthcare system. And getting rid of the ACA would only exasperate these inequalities and make it harder for people who already face disproportionate barriers to accessing medical care. In just two weeks, the Supreme Court will begin to hear oral arguments in a case that could invalidate the ACA and jeopardize Mainers' access to health care. And we are extremely concerned about the very real and dangerous consequences that would result from striking down the ACA, which would include eliminating the health coverage programs such as the marketplace and main care expansion, as well as all of the protections and other provisions of the law, including protections for people against pre-existing condition exclusions, annual and lifetime benefit caps, and protections against discrimination based off race, color, age, disability, or sex. Striking down the ACA would be devastating and have far-reaching implications that would create chaos within our healthcare system, rip away coverage from over 100,000 Mainers and millions of Americans, and make it harder for Maine people, small business owners, and our rural hospitals to make ends meet. We cannot go back to the days when discriminating based on health status was an acceptable practice, where medical debt ran rampant and access to healthcare was grossly inadequate. At a time like this, policymakers need to be doing everything within their power to preserve and strengthen the ACA and to expand access to coverage to even more people, not to dismantle it. And we need our policymakers to focus on what really matters to people right now, which is ensuring access to care and providing relief to states and small businesses and the millions of Americans who have lost loved ones, their employment, their access to health care and economic security due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I also want to make clear that while this threat is very real and very dangerous, the ACA right now is still the law of the land and coverage is still available. Open enrollment for the marketplace begins in just a few days on November 1st, and I want to encourage anyone who is eligible to continue enrolling in marketplace and coverage and expanded main care without hesitation. And if anyone has questions about what they're eligible for or need help applying for coverage, I encourage them to call our free confidential helpline at 1-800-965-7476. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. I'm glad you could join us. And finally, I'd like to introduce Tiara Ross, a small business owner and the advocacy coordinator for Survivor Speak USA. Thanks, Tiara. Hi, thank you, Dusty. Um, hi, my name is Tiara Ross. Um, I live in Portland. I'm a small business owner. Um, I'm at high risk industry, um, which I need access to healthcare is really crucial. I'm also um, a single mom. I'm a survivor of sex trafficking. I'm also the advocacy coordinator for Survivor Speak USA. Survivor Speak USA is a nonprofit organization that serves men and women that have been involved in prostitution. Many of the survivors in and their family depend on main care as well as my own family. 
Especially now during these uncertain times, we rarely need health care. I have experienced difficulties receiving main care. Sometimes the paperwork, it doesn't go through and my family, we will have gaps and we won't have any coverage. When this happens, it is a very stressful time for my family. Um, and if my family receives another gap, which happens every year, I'm, I'm uncertain that my family will receive uh, health care if this affordable act gets turned over. Um, family like like mine, um, we need to support. We need to support health care, and we need <laughs> excuse me. Families like ours need more support support to get health care, not less. We need to make sure of this, especially during pandemic, which has disproportionately impact people of color and me, <clears throat> particularly African Americans, and expose the depth of systematic racism in our healthcare system. We need to protect health care and the Affordable Act care. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiara. I really appreciate you sharing your story with us. Um, it's so powerful to hear, and I know, you know, all of us on this call, even our individual lives have been affected by our ability to access affordable reproductive health care and comprehensive health care. Everybody in our state, in our communities, in our country deserve the ability to access health care, and we deserve a democracy that works for all of us. And now, as Nicole and Kate and Tiara have said, what's in front of us is our need to really focus on fighting for that at our community level, at our state level, and within our district court level. Uh, we deserve courts that work for everyone. And while we know now that uh, we have a majority on the Supreme Court that may not share that value of supporting healthcare for everyone, um, we know that the power of our democracy lies with us. Uh, just because the Senate has abused its responsibility to the people does not mean that we collectively as advocacy organizations, as activists, as community members, as family members can, uh, can take a break from the work. We all need to pull together now uh, this week at the ballot box and in every election thereafter to ensure that we're working together for policies that protect all of us. Thank you, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, um, thank you so much for being here today. This is a really important time for our state and for our country. And I know that we'll all be working together, especially in the next, uh, the coming weeks as the ACA case <laughs> heads to the Supreme Court. Um, and as we make our decisions in the wake of the election results next week. So thank you all for being here this morning. And I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you, Justy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Take care.